that lightning show last night was was awesome absolutely beautiful it's you know i spent that whole week or so on the last video you guys saw chasing monsoons and had a couple lightning strikes but nothing like that last night and uh, i did a time lapse so i'll tell you guys kind of what my settings were you know kind of how i shot it i had to experiment a little bit shooting at night and I was able to get my ISO really low, like 100, but when I did that, I had a hard time catching a lot of the lightning strikes. And then I, I, you know, I cranked it up really high, the ISO and shortened shutter speeds. Tried it that way too, and that way worked okay, but the best settings that I had was about ISO in between 250 and 400. If I had it right there, I set my shutter speed at about 10 seconds, in between 10 and 12 seconds. That was the best. And then of course I was shooting at like right around F, I think right around like F4. That to me provided the best. It captured the best lightning strikes. All the all the shots you guys saw in that time lapse was all at those settings. You know, 10 seconds, ISO, uh, like I said, I think it was around 320. And then uh, F4 was my aperture. And what I did was, since my shutter speed was at 10 seconds, I set my interval, so I have an intervalometer built into my Nikon D850 that I was using, and what I would do is I set the interval to 12 seconds. So that way there was a two second gap in between each shot. So my shutter speed was 10 seconds, my interval was 12 seconds. So you always wanna keep your uh, shutter speed a little shorter than your interval. Obviously you don't wanna go over it because that's not gonna work. So because there was so much lightning last night, I was able to catch a lot of it, which was fantastic. And then you guys saw at the very end there, what I did was I took a bunch of shots, a bunch of my images, and I blended them together all into one so you see multiple lightning strikes, which looks awesome, I love it. Maybe in another video I'll show you guys how to do that. It's actually really, really easy to do in Photoshop. It makes it really dramatic, which is really cool. So now I'm gonna head up to Prescott, which is about a two hour drive from my house, and we're gonna try it again. I'm gonna show you guys, uh, sit down with you. Like I said, last night I couldn't really vlog. Kind of a last minute thing. I hurried up, got out there, and just shot it. So. Now I'm gonna be able to talk to you guys a little bit through what I'm doing, how I'm setting up my shots, and yeah, let's see what we can do. So we're heading that way now. All right guys, so I found a little open spot. I'm about two and a half hours away from my original uh, destination, but I found a nice open spot. I got a storm behind me. Uh, rain's already coming down. I've seen some lightning strikes there, uh, some thunder all around, even above me. So it's a little sketchy here. I got rain behind me this way. So I got rain and lightning this way. I got rain and lightning this way. And I also have some out in the distance this way. So I got it all around me. So I'm probably going to set this camera up on another tripod. I have an intervalometer for that. So if you don't have an intervalometer, uh, inside like I do on the D850. I'm shooting on the uh, Sony a7 III uh, and I have a, a, an intervalometer that I can actually plug in to do the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna face it off in a different direction and uh, try and catch some more lightning off in a separate direction. So, but what I have on here is because it's the daytime, I have a 10 stop ND filter on um, and it's lengthening, lengthening my shutter to about eight seconds. I have it on ISO 200 uh, at F7.1. And what I'm doing is since my shutter speed's eight seconds, like I told you guys earlier, my interval is 10 seconds. So there's a two second gap in between my shutter speed when it stops and when my next frame begins. So I got it set up to where it's gonna shoot about 450 frames and it's going to shoot it every 10 seconds with an eight second shutter speed so hopefully it's going to catch this lightning here that it's been going off a little bit uh, i've seen four or five strikes here in the last probably 10 minutes not enough like it was last night like you guys saw at the very very beginning of this video but uh got some mammoth clouds actually up here you guys can see the formula of mammoth clouds which is really cool um <laughs> but it is kind of sketchy like i said getting some really dark clouds and some thunder all around here so I'm going to set up with this camera, probably something a little bit different because I don't have a 10 stop for this. What I'm going to do is I got a, uh, I think this is a three stop or a, yeah, it's a three stop that I have that's actually on right now. So what I'll probably do is have it close to maybe a one or two second interval. And I think my shutter speed is probably going to be anywhere from, you know, a 10th of a second to maybe a fifth of a second hopefully. So it's going to be a little bit different. Maybe I'll do it every second. Yeah. You guys will see the result here in a second. So 
one thing I want to tell you guys, if you don't have an intervalometer and you don't want to do time lapses, there is one other way. There is something, <laughs> there is something called uh, the lightning trigger. Man, this is crazy. So I have my D850 right here going off every 10 seconds. And I have this, so you guys can see here, I have my A7 III set up with the intervalometer and uh, it's only about a half a second. So I'm taking a shot every second. And I got lightning over this way too. You guys can see, man, this is going off all around me. So I hit a good spot. Uh, well, let's see what happens. All right guys, well good morning. We had an eventful night, lots of lightning, which makes me happy. I wanted just to kind of end this video going over just a little bit of recap. So tripod, if you can get your hands on some filters, I think that would work if you wanted to shoot lightning during the day. Uh, six stop and a 10 stop. If you can get, you know, I mean, if you're serious about landscape photography anyway, you're gonna want to get a set of filters. I highly recommend them. Uh, I use Benrose. Benrose are my favorite. They're a bit pricey, but I use an entire system, you know, with a holder and adapters for different lenses. And then I got, you know, a few different filters. You want a, an intervalometer, but my D850, I can actually do it all in the camera. So I have an intervalometer built in, so I don't have to buy a separate intervalometer for it. What I'm shooting on now, the a7 III, I did have to buy a separate intervalometer for it. And with that one, all I had was my three stop ND filter. What I did was I set my, my shutter speed, I got to a half a second. So my intervals, I did at one second. So, and that's one thing guys, when you set up your intervals, uh, make sure your actual intervals are just a little bit longer than your longest shutter speed. So let's say you had a half a second shutter speed, that's all you can get make your intervals at one second and set up like, you know, 300 shots or 500 shots or whatever it is. Or if you have, if you can get up to a five second shutter speed, make your interval six seconds. I had a 10 second shutter speed and my intervals were 12 seconds. So I had a two second gap in between each shot. To me that worked the best. That way there's a very small gap between uh, when your shutter speed ends or when your next uh, frame begins, that way you can catch the lightning as much as possible. The best ISO I found was between 200 and 400. That seemed to catch the lightning the best for some reason. And then I was shooting it right around between F4 and F6.1. Okay, those were the best. Those settings right there, if you got to play around. Now, of course, lightning is going to be different if it's farther away, if it's closer, if it's not very big. Uh, I just, it all depends, you know, you got to mess around with the settings a little bit, but that's the best settings I had. Just try to get it between that 200 and 400 ISO. Uh, your shutter speed, I wouldn't go over 10 or 12 seconds. I try to keep it right around 10 or 12 seconds uh, when you're shooting intervals like that. If you can afford a lightning trigger, I'd get one. They're really nice. Like I said, I just ordered one, but uh, it, it hasn't come in yet if you're serious about shooting lightning. And uh, the software that I use to put the time lapses together, I'm going to do a separate video on, on time lapses and how I do them. I'm going to do a Milky Way time lapse and a Holy Grail time lapse, which is a day to night or a night to day transition, which is a pretty hard time lapse. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the, uh, the workflow that I do and the software that I use for my time lapses. So... Uh, I think that's it guys. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.